Hey everybody, Chuck Barone here, Friday, September 30th, 2022, Friday, last day of the week, last day of this crappy month, last day of this crappy quarter. Let's, I'm glad to get it all over with, guys. A lot to finish up the month with. Um, as always, before we start the show, though, I just want to thank everybody for their support for the show, watching the videos, and all the stuff you guys do every day. We really appreciate you guys. Um, in the markets today, not a great day for the markets again. Uh, we have the stock market down across the board today. Um, just a, I guess it was fitting that the market would end the month like this today. The Dow, Don, Dow Jones Industrial Average is down 8% just in September. It's been a horrifying month. I think the market's coming to grips with the reality of things, or has come to grips, I guess I should say. And, uh, you know, the market now is anticipating this recession coming. Consumers are spending their money a little bit differently. It's causing an analyst at Wall, on Wall Street to go crazy trying to figure out new valuations. And uh, good luck doing it, because... You know, in this environment right now, I don't think there's really anything you can say that's for certain, except for more, more inflation, more pain coming for middle class, working people, my favorite schmuckatellis, and uh, it's just a bummer, man. It really is. It is what it is, though. I guess, you know, we've had a good run, 14 years of basically zero interest rates. Um, it was great. It had a pretty good economy, pretty much. After once we recovered from the big kablooey in 08, had a good good economy. Finishes with the big blow off like they always do, and now we get to go, you know, get torn down and rebuilt. Uh, in the bond market today, bonds down again. Bond market's really in a bear market. It's kind of crazy watching stocks and bonds in a bear market at the same time. Uh, the 10 year sitting at 3.80%. Now that's still down. It was sitting at 3.96 just earlier this week. I was thinking the 10 year could go through 4%, but apparently the forces in the market um, are not going to let the rate rise that fast. Now, I have been reading and I reported uh, on the show pension funds are pulling a lot of their money out of the stock market and putting it into the bond market. So that may have a little bit of an effect on driving these prices a little bit. But the 10-year at 3.80 is still super high compared to where it's been. And the two-year sitting at 4.26%. So now we have this 46-point spread again. Now it's narrowing down, but we have this inverted yield curve where the two years higher than the 10. It was narrowing down. I thought it might actually flatten out or re-invert. But now it's widening back out. We got 46 basis points between them. Short-term rates higher than long-term. Uh, the dollar today up very small. Uh, on the index, sitting at 112.25. The dollar is still the king, guys. There's not much competition out there for the dollar. Actually, it's putting a lot of pressure on the British pound, on the Japanese yen. Um, you know, these England and Japan have both had to intervene in the markets to support their currencies. Um, we'll see how, if the Fed actually going to do anything about it or just let these other countries and our neighbors and our friends, you know, shuffle along for themselves. We'll see. It's going to be interesting. Uh, metals today, in spite of a strong dollar, had a small gain today. Gold sitting at 1663. What is that, 10? And uh, 1663.60. Silver $19.15. I was happy to see silver back up above $19. I think it's a natural support line right now for silver. Um, hopefully this is the start now of a little bit of a run in metals. They've kind of been stagnating here for a little bit. It'd be nice to see a little bit of a pop. And it's certainly deserved with inflation being where it is right now. Uh, oil down today. Very small down day. Uh, $79.62 for a barrel of West Texas Intermediate. Natural gas sitting at $6.79 for their million BTUs. Natural gas is the puzzling one to me. You know, it was up to almost nine and a half. To see it come down this far, I really don't see where the extra supply is coming from. 
I really don't see where the lack of demand is coming from, so this is kind of puzzling to me. I'm not sure if it's just traders trying to you know, get the week out of the market, if it's uh, some profit taking or a combination, but natural gas is kind of an enigma right now. Bitcoin today up small. Uh, just sitting, still sitting at just under 19,500. It honestly was a good day for Bitcoin for me, even though it wasn't up very much, just to see it separate itself from the stock market. Because lately, Bitcoin's been trading with the market. When the market's up, Bitcoin's up. When the market's down, Bitcoin's down. So it was nice to see a change today where uh, Bitcoin rose in spite of a falling stock market. Um, and economic news you guys need to hear today, there's some Pretty big news today, guys. Uh, this PCE report, this is the Fed's preferred measure. They don't really go by CPI anymore. They use this PCE, this Personal Consumption Expenditure Index, um, came out today. Not good. PCE is still climbing, with the core up to 4.9% from 47 last month, a month ago, I guess. Um, that is going to drive, I think that pretty much cements now a three quarter point increase coming up in November. Um, this is the main gauge the Federal, Federal Reserve uses. The main headline number on their PC was at 6.2%, um, which would be welcome from the, what are we at, 9% roughly, 8.9% 8, 8 on the uh, CPI number. So it'd be nice to see uh, if the headline inflation can come down. And I believe that was driven by, of course, falling oil and gas prices. But the core numbers being up, that doesn't bode well, guys. This inflation is starting to get entrenched. Um, the Fed's going to have to continue to work to do something about it. I mean, it is what it is, right? Sorry. Um, also interesting today, I was checking the Atlanta Fed. And I'm, going to, I'm very interested to see how this third quarter uh, GDP report comes out. Now, the Atlanta Fed had most of the month been suggesting a gain in the third quarter, uh, any very small gain, 0.3% was the last time I reported it on this show. Well, I look today, and lo and behold, now they're saying third quarter growth will be 2.4%, revised up from that 0.3. So they're expecting some growth in this quarter, guys. Um, it'll be interesting to see what's going to happen now in this fourth quarter, because if you have now, you know, you have two negative quarters, you have two positive quarters, and it could turn out you have actually a positive GDP for the year, I think it's just, I guess it just goes to show what we've been talking about on this show for a while now, this uncertainty, this weird conflicting data everybody's been getting. Very, very difficult to gauge what in the heck to do in these markets. Um, I'll, uh, the one thing we know for sure is that rates are going to continue to climb. We know there's a recession coming. We know as hot as, you know, the employment market's been we know that that's going to turn around and jobs are going to be lost. Um, so none of this stuff changes that. It's just fascinating to see how with the Fed raising rates as much as they have this year and, you know, core numbers still going up. Not great, guys. Not great news. Um, another consumer report today, consumer spending holding up. But... Buyers are spending their money now on the basics. They're not spending their money on consumer goods or fancy stuff. Uh, Nike shows how bad things are. Um, the shares tanked last week. Nike had to report that they need to be uh, putting steeper discounts on the product to get it to sell. A lot of companies are stuck with big inventories they're trying to you know, shrink down. So they're discounting everything like crazy to move it. Not a great thing for earnings. Um, they said that furniture and cars are really getting smacked um, as far as demand for those things because uh, you know they're most of those most people who buy cars and even furniture finance those. So with rates skyrocketing, the demand for those financed goods is falling pretty sharply. Carmax 
comes out and warns that inflation, along with you know rising interest rates, is now starting to take a toll on car sales, which then you know CarMax is pretty big, the nationwide firm, a lot of sales. That warning now, because you can expect CarMax sales to go down, spooking the markets like crazy, um, and it's rippling out through the broader parts of the auto and auto sales sectors. Um, Bed Bath & Beyond comes out reporting their sales are down 28% in spite of deeper discounts to try to get rid of unsold inventory. Even travel, which has been really hot lately, uh, starting to get hit with this stuff, Carnival Cruise Line shares crashed 20% because they came out with a really crappy earnings report. Um, not good. This is none of this good, guys. This, this recession is starting to take hold. Inflation is starting to change consumer behavior. This is all going to be very fascinating to watch. Um, if it wasn't hurting so many people, you could make a heck of a TV show out of this crazy world we're living in. Um, this was interesting today, too. I read that last month, $9 billion was withdrawn from bond funds. So last month, the big report was how much was being pulled out of stock funds, equity funds. Now they're pulling money out of bond funds. I guess this whole idea of cash is king is back in vogue. Uh, I don't, because I don't know, I don't see you selling out of the bond market to buy stocks and vice versa. Um, so I thought that was fascinating and I wanted to pass that along. And another new report came out today saying that right now, 60% of Americans 60% of Americans are living paycheck to paycheck, meaning they have no savings, they have no extra money. Typically, they have to kind of figure out how to spend that money so they can pay the most of their stuff. And this involves a lot of juggling of money and bills and stuff. It's just a horrible thing right now that that kind of majority in this country is being forced to live like that. Um, the big surprise of this, though, was that the largest increase in people living paycheck to paycheck was with people making more than 100000 per year. Now they report that 45% of people in the $100,000 income range are living paycheck to paycheck. Now, I don't know if that's a result of you know, the rising costs we're all dealing with, I don't know if that's a result of extravagant lifestyle, living way beyond your means. It's just that's a pretty shocking thing to hear that, you know, that many people with that kind of income can't afford to save anything. New York Life came out, reported today that Americans are withdrawing over $600 a month from their savings accounts just to pay, pay bills and pay the necessaries. The everyday cost is what they called it. Um, so Americans now are it's worse than paycheck to paycheck because now they're digging into their savings to maintain a lifestyle. And another interesting thing, they said 46% of the people they surveyed had an unexpected expense in the last 90 days, meaning their car broke down, they had a medical expense, they had something like that. The average expense was about $1,400, uh, which is probably about these days typical for an auto repair. And a lot of people had to go in debt to pay these, you know, off, off budget expenses. Um, you know, things are starting to deteriorate now. We've seen what's been happening in the real estate market. We see what's, you know, just again, though, so much conflicting data making it really difficult now to see through the fog here. Um, you know, you got a positive GDP, you got, you know, some stuff in the country just doing well, and then everything else at the same time not doing so well. Stock markets cratering, bond markets cratering, worldwide calamity economically, tensions, geopolitical tensions. It just seems like we're not in a great spot. You know, I just don't know if it's just negativity in the air and we're trying to look for more of the negative than the positive, but... You know, this report today, yeah, not a good one, guys. Anyway, that's what we have for today. Um, next week's a big week. We'll get GDP, I'm guessing. Um, we really appreciate your guys' support for the show. If you like what you're hearing here, 
hit the like button, ask your questions in the comments section. Um, if you haven't already subscribed, make sure to check your subscriptions, your notifications. Of course, YouTube's still purging us. Um, if you have a more complex question, ask Chuck Barone at gmail.com. Uh, hang in there, guys. The things we've been saying to do, our morning star came out basically copying our, our recommendations today. So hang in there. We're on the right path. The country isn't, but we are. We'll see you guys on Monday. Until then, take care. Thanks.